episode 201 of Board Game Blitz, a podcast about all things board games that you can listen to in less time than it takes for the first person to arrive after a party's intended start time. Board Game Blitz is sponsored by Gray Fox Games. This week, we're planning our perfect game day. First, we discuss a couple games we've played recently, Almost Innocent and Valvara. Then, we plan out all the details of our perfect game day. And now, here are your hosts, Andy and Crystal. Before we get into the episode, we have a couple of announcements to make. First, this isn't board game related, but it's me related. (laughs) I got nominated for a content creator of the year for the Thinky Puzzle Games Award. So if you don't know, (laughs) I stream on my personal Twitch channel, which is Ambirona. I stream puzzle video games, Thinky Puzzle Video Games, which is, I think like Baba is You, which I mentioned is one of my favorite video games. But games like that, where you're thinking a lot and not really having to rely on speed or skill of dexterity in video games, but like thinking. So I like playing a lot of those. And so there's Thinky Game Awards, the first Thinky Game Awards, which I will link in the show notes. They have a lot of different categories, but yeah, I got nominated for content creator. So if you like watching me on Twitch, you can vote for me. While we're on the topic, Ambi, I have to tell you that Mm -hmm. you should play Chance of Sinar. Oh yeah, yeah. I played the demo. That was really good. Did you play it? Have you played it? Yes, I've played it and I'm Uh actually toward the end of the game. I'm making a lot of good progress and it is fascinating. If you're mm-hmm. a person who enjoys puzzle games and language as a whole, which mm-hmm. I know you are, you absolutely <laughs> have to play this game. There have been a couple points where I got stuck and had to look up some like tips and hints, but I don't mind doing that with games because I would rather just enjoy the experience. But yeah, highly recommend Chance of Sinar. And for yeah. anybody that's listening, that's S-E-N-N-A-A-R. <laughs> yeah, it's on my wish list. <laughs> awesome. Our other announcement is the usual. You guys are not going to be surprised to hear that. Tabletop Live Network, the monthly marathon is this weekend. And I am going to be streaming on Saturday, the 27th from 8 to 10 p.m. And I'm very excited because the entire marathon is themed around roll and write or flip and write games. And I am going to be playing one of my all-time favorites, if not my favorite. I I go back and forth between this one and Trails of Tucana, but Riverside is the game I will be playing and you in chat will be able to play along with me. And there might be a guest appearance from my partner, Dan, on stream Mm -hmm. as well. So that's going to be a lot of fun. That'll be from 8 to 10 on Saturday the 27th. 8 to 10 p.m. Pacific Pacific. time. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Recently, I got to play Almost Innocent, which is a game published in 2023, designed by Philippe Atali, published by Colossal Games. I got this as a Christmas gift, so it was free, but not a review copy. But (laughs) Almost Innocent is a cooperative deduction game themed around your, like, proving your innocence, I guess, your, <laughs> for crimes that you didn't commit. <laughs> but yeah, for deduction games, usually the theme doesn't come through too much for me. <laughs> but in this game, it's like a deduction game, kind of like Clue, but cooperative. So you are all trying to guess the hand of the person to your right. So everyone has a hand of cards that have different categories. There's like one in each category, um, the victim or like the weapon or something. I don't remember exactly, but there's four or five different categories of cards and everyone has one of each. And so you're trying to guess the person to your right and then you're giving clues for the person to your left. Then there's a grid in the middle. This is actually like a campaign game with different scenarios, but I guess you can play whichever scenario. It's not like you have to play them in order, but each scenario has a different grid in the middle and the grid shows all of the different options for that scenario. So it has like all of the different cards that are available in that grid and the grid goes like a through f or whatever and one through eight i don't know (laughs) but so the way you're giving clues or asking questions for clues instead of asking like is there do you have a blue card or whatever you ask for a specific column or row and you have these clue tokens. So you can ask either the number of cards or if there's that type of card. So you go to the column and say like how many number, if you're asking numbers, like how many in this column are my card basically. Or if you're asking for that specific type, how many are like the victim card, which is usually only one or two 
because it's it has all the different colors in there and then there's also spots that aren't existing they're just like blank spots in the grid so basically you, when you do that everyone answers kind of like paint the roses if, if you guys have played that that's <laughs> another cooperative deduction game where everyone answers questions so every turn everyone's answering but then you cannot ever repeat a column or a oh. row so if you ask a question about a row you can't ask another question about that row so you can, like, like to get information you have to ask about rows and columns and you also have a limited number of clue tokens so you're trying to like use those everyone has to use that same set of that pool of clue tokens <laughs> then you're writing down on your own little sheet you have a grid and you're marking off it's dry erase markers so you have like a dry erase marker with the grid on there which is one of the problems with the game <laughs> oh. <laughs> but i'll talk i got to talk about that a little later so like the deduction part is kind of neat i like that part where you're having to do the grids and trying to think of the questions and then as the scenarios go on it introduces special player powers and then there's also like this queen piece that moves around and blocks makes it so you have to spend two tokens to ask on a certain row the queen i felt didn't do that much we played twice once the first scenario and then once with like we would skip to scenario nine to see what like the special powers were because the game wasn't that exciting for us when we played it first so, so i liked the special powers it added stuff like the one person had a special power where you can re-ask on one of the rows or columns that you've already done other people had like a special question they asked or something so that was kind of neat and i like the deduction part but the information handling <laughs> was not great because there's there's a grid in the middle and it's showing all of the cards but it's just showing the picture and so the cards have a name and the picture but the, like some of the pictures are kind of hard to tell between each other it's stylized art like i like the art but it's kind of just hard to tell at a glance what it is so at the beginning when you're marking down what cards you have you're like looking at your picture and then you have to like compare along the board and then mark down and then like every time when you make the accusation you do it by the name not by the picture because you can't say it's like oh it's the picture of this and this and this and, and so you have to like cross reference it's like oh it was that one so that's the name is uh <laughs> and you look around and trying to accuse so that that was kind of annoying i wish they just had the text on the board too because it's big enough to have the text of the card on the board as well and then also because where you make notes is dry erase and the dry erase markers are like normal board game dry erase markers it's not going to be the it's not the ones that you buy yourself for roll and write games if you play a lot of those like the it's fine not the fancy ones, ones. it's yeah. not those it's just regular dry erase markers that are not fine point so you're trying to write notes in this <laughs> dry oh, erase no, marker and no. like i was trying to and you have to write the like the name of your accusations well you don't have to but they have a spot for that and i couldn't read my writing because <laughs> Yeah, because they're oh, like even the the smaller dry erase markers that come with games, like the tips. Yeah, even the if tips they are start, not fine. Yeah, even if they start a <laughs> tiny bit pointed, they get smushed pretty fast. They're like they're not that sturdy. Yeah, so it would have been a lot better, I think, with a pad of paper and a pencil for writing notes. If I had liked it more, I would have made my own pad of paper or print out not not a pad. I can't make a pad of paper. I mean, I could, but like I would just print out sheets. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome to Andy's paper making uh, podcast. <laughs> where we talk about pulp <laughs> yeah but yeah i would print out sheets and just use pencil for that part but the grid part cross-referencing that with the names was very annoying as well so i didn't like that um then the deduction part was fine it felt like another one of like typical deduction game but i guess i also didn't like paint the roses as much because similarly you're just doing deduction kind of on your own about the person next to you it's not really cooperating in the dedu deduction so when i think of a cooperative deduction game i want to be like cooperating together for the deduction rather than just like individually doing our own deductions because then it felt more like a game like clue or sleuth where we're doing our individual deductions and then it, instead of racing for it we're just like waiting until everyone has it but like with cooperative deduction games i like where we're kind of like working together more like shipwreck arcana or like decorum stuff like that where it actually needs the cooperation so yeah i was a little disappointed and almost innocent but it is like a cooperative clue like it has that feeling so if you want like a regular deduction game just cooperative instead of a race against your teammates then then it is good but you might want to print out um <laughs> I looked on the file section of BGG. There aren't printouts yet, but probably someone will eventually make them. So <laughs> you could probably print out your own things or or use like the fine line special dry erase markers. <laughs> but yeah, that's almost innocent. The game that I am going to talk about today is a 2022 release 
from Studio H, which is also being distributed by other publishers, including Hatchet Board Games here in the United States. Oh, I guess I could say the name of it. It's Valbara. <laughs> I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correct. There's two A's at the beginning. Valbara, maybe, is more accurate. It was designed by Olivier Cipier. I'm probably butchering his name as well. Apologies. But Valbara is a simple set collection card game where technically, thematically, players are playing as clan leaders who are trying to take over new land territories. And they have a hand of cards, 12 different cards with different numbers and members of their tribe listed on them. Every player has the same set of 12 cards. The iconography will be slightly different because it'll be your clan specifically. Every round, a number of territory cards get set out to be claimed equal to the number of players that are in the game. All players will then simultaneously select a member of their tribe from their hand secretly, and then they all get revealed at the same time. All of the different tribe members have a different number, and many or all of them have a special power that will go off when they get activated. Once all the cards are revealed, the tribe members go off in order from lowest to highest numerically. So if you played your number one card and someone else played their number three card, you will go first and then they will go. If players play the same numerical card, there is a tie-breaking system based on the clans that rotates every round. So like there's a little thing Thing that shows the clan icons and that switches up every single round as far as like who beats who in a tie. So if you are ahead, you break the tie and you will go first. So once it gets to your turn, you activate the special power of your tribesperson and then you claim one of the available territories and take it for yourself. You do that for nine rounds, and then whoever has the most points wins. It's ridiculously simple as far as mechanics go. This is one of those games that as soon as I started playing it, like maybe two turns in, I was like, I love this. It just, mm -hmm. it's one of those simple set collection games that feels satisfying to play, and it feels intuitive, and the special abilities are nice. Like, it's not super random. Like, you obviously know what cards are in everybody's hands to start and then you can see what cards they've played and the special powers do a lot of interesting things there's some of them that like trigger if the cards on that cards left and right are odd or even so if you like you know people have a lot of odd cards in their hand you can play that tribes person and likely get some points out of that and then there's also cards that will let you manipulate what territories are available to be taken. And what's neat about that is there's the territories that are available in the current round, and then you can also see the territories that are coming up for the next round, and you can potentially swap out territories between the current round, the next round, and even the top of the deck. So if you don't see what you want available, you can manipulate things. So there's a lot of interesting, like, light strategic depth there, but it's still, again, ridiculously easy to pick up, learn, and play. I really like it. The theme, as you can guess, is non-existent. <laughs> like, aside from the names of the tribes people and the, the, it, the artwork is beautiful, I will give it that, but like, there's no real theme to the gameplay. But I really like it. I think it's a lot of fun. And I don't have a physical copy of it yet. I've been playing it digitally and I want a physical copy now. So I might have to reach out to our person at Hatchet and be like, I love you. <laughs> so we will we'll see uh, if I get my hands on a copy soon. But this is one that I could absolutely see going into my quiver and coming with me when I travel. Because it's light, it's quick, it's easy to teach. And it's a really fun game. So that's my thoughts on Valbara. For our discussion today, we have taken some inspiration from Blitzketeer Avron, who very kindly, after episode 200, put a comment in our Discord channel and said, looking for show topics? And he gave us one, and so we're going to talk about it. He said, what would be your perfect game night or day? How many people? How long is the session? Would it be at somebody's house, a game store, somewhere else? What games would you play? And we're kind of, for the sake of this thought experiment, especially for me personally, and I know Ambie as well, but like I'm omitting COVID as a factor because I'm still not really going out into public spaces much. But if I do decide to mention public spaces here, it is not illness as a factor, basically. Mm -hmm. 
And they also said uh, transport and <laughs> those those issues, right? If you want yeah, to yeah, someone yeah. who doesn't live near you. <laughs> right. Well, and I also, I've, I so I've been thinking about this. And mm. I also, money might also be a yeah, factor money. here. Yeah. Because I think truly what I would want to do, I, I want to talk about venue first. Because mm-hmm. generally, I do prefer to do game days at someone's house if mm-hmm. I know the person well and I'm mm-hmm. comfortable in their house. Or to have people over to my place Mm -hmm. but me too i also really loved years ago like there were some places here in town that used to do international tabletop day events every year and there was this one like restaurant brewery place here in vegas that would host an event and like the whole place would be filled with board gamers during international Mm -hmm. tabletop day like a couple of my friends like literally kind of i don't know if they reserved the place or talked to the owners or what but i think having it in a venue where food and beverage is readily available all the time would be so beneficial Mm -hmm. yeah and i loved going to conventions too and just like so for my perfect ideal one there would be like basically like a convention space where there's a bunch of tables available of all different shapes oh the shapes (laughs) matter you know you're laughing but that's such a that's a factor most people wouldn't even think Mm -hmm. to consider but there are certain games that like you can't play around a circle or you can't play around a square (laughs) yeah but um I, when I was saying all different shapes, I, like that's what I meant. But then I was try- starting things like triangle and stuff. But I mean, like regular <laughs> table shapes. <laughs> but, um... I demand triangle tables. <laughs> and then also having a lot of games available. <laughs> because, oh yeah. Well, I really loved playing a bunch of different types of games at conventions, and that's what I love. But also, I would have mini conventions at our house for like Toby's birthday or something we have, but we, it's hard to get enough table space if you have more people. So I want like a a private convention, (laughs) but with all of the games from said convention. So what you're basically saying is you want to bring back BlitzCon, but we don't want to do any of the work. (laughs) But also have like the BGG Con library. (laughs) Okay. We'll we'll talk to BGG. I'm certain that they will help us out with this. (laughs) We'll just poof a convention into existence without any work whatsoever. I'm (laughs) sure that's how these things work as people who have worked in behind the scenes in conventions before. I know that is exactly not how they work at all. (laughs) Yeah, but yes, having food available and easily available is nice and like comfort. Yes. Okay. So seating is another thing like Mm -hmm. cushions. I cannot sit on a folding chair, like a metal or a wood folding (laughs) chair hours upon hours. When I was younger, I could. I'm old now and I cannot do that anymore. My booty, my back, everything starts to hurt after a while. And then I do that old person thing where like stand up and I like stretch and it's just like, oh my God, I feel old. So yeah, I want like the most luxurious, comfortable seating. (laughs) I don't care if it's at a house or anywhere else. Like the seating has to be spot on. I I don't care too much about the chair, I think. I don't want it too cushiony because then I'll just like. (laughs) Amby would like a bed of nails, please. (laughs) No, no. I mean, I don't want like a sofa or something. Like, I don't want something like that because one, I would want to lean back instead of like getting to the table. And then also, it'd be, if it's too comfortable, I'll just like fall asleep. I just want like a normal, regular dining chair. Like, I don't know. I just. This is our dream, Amby. And you're just like, "Eh, I just want a dining chair. Like, (laughs) I'm fine with those. All right. <laughs> no hippity hops at your game table. I get it. Okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> but yes, pl- plenty of food, good food. Yes, and that's, yeah, like what, if it's at somebody's house or if I'm hosting, I always try and make sure that I have at least enough beverage options available, if nothing else. And then we, if for most game days, we tend to just like order pizza or something like that. But for my perfect game day, ideally, I think I would love to have... Not full meals per se, but also not just snack food. It would be like Mm -hmm. foods of some substance, but that you could kind of come and get in small amounts. So Yeah, so we would also have the Bacchanal Buffet, like there, where we just like go whenever with unlimited time and it would be free. Yes. (laughs) You know what? I used to work for Caesars Entertainment, so I will get them on the phone as well. 
I'm certain they'll be in for this too. So BGG to delivers the, the library thing. to Caesar's Palace and we close down the Bacchanal Buffet. I'm sure they won't lose any revenue. Perfect, and then perfect. And came there. Yeah. Oh man, like a literal buffet that was just hot and ready the whole time yeah. like, would be freaking magical. And also that like we didn't have to clean up Yo, no, no, yeah. That is 100% a given. Also, ooh, we have robots that will put away every game for us after we're done playing them, like, perfectly, just the way we want. No human labor involved here, but, like, the robots would, would re-box everything, so as soon as we got done playing one game, if we wanted to, we could just move on to the next, or we could have a snack, and we didn't have to worry about putting stuff away. Our, like our perfect game night is like <laughs> yeah i think this is turning into my fantasy game night yeah. all of a sudden i've realized some um, of these might not be doable <laughs> might some might but maybe like hey, all will not be robots can do a lot of stuff now i think putting a board game away is is within the realm of possibilities although i don't think i would have access to those robots yeah but yeah, how many people would be at your perfect game night? Or I day? think it would be somewhere in the vicinity of like 12 to 15. Because mm -hmm. for me, that is a large enough group that you could split into four to five regular size groups, you know, like four-ish players to play like normal strategy whatever games. Mm -hmm. But you also have enough people to play large scale party games, but you also have a little bit beyond that. So that way, in case that you do have people who are not keen on party games, that mm -hmm. they can still break off and play something else if they want. And basically you would kind of always be able to jump into something. Like you need mm -hmm. enough people that well, your game doesn't end and you're just sitting there waiting for yeah. everybody to finish their game right like yeah, you that's need, the main thing <laughs> yeah like i think five ish tables of regular players would satisfy that maybe like 20 mm -hmm. people would probably be where i would top out yeah i was thinking all of my board game friends Oh, I mean, okay, well, I'm obviously, like, I want to see all my friends. I was thinking more, like, but, but the thing is, well, if you invited like all of my board game friends, I would get no board games played, truly. Because oh, if, I, if I had my board game friends from, like, our friends, like, from Great Way Games and the, the Northern California gaming peeps, like, Eric and Netters and Joe and, like, I would just want to talk and catch up with everybody the whole time. Yeah. Well, so, okay, oh, that you actually sounds fun, too. Day for catching up and then a day for playing games. Yes. But, but I was thinking, yeah, like, a lot of people that I like playing games with a lot. I'm not sure exactly what the number would be, but I would be fine with over 20. Because, like, because I would probably also want to play two rooms in a boom. And I like, I oh, that's a, a good people. call. It <laughs> is nice to have a large enough group to be able to do yeah. one of those types of games. But then ideally, so in a perfect game night world, everyone would be able to play games and then people would finish at the right time to be able to hop into games with other people and play the perfect game that they want to play. So like all the games would end at the same time. But that's, I mean, like, or like <laughs> they would be ending at the same times where other people want to switch off and stuff. But that doesn't happen. That would be a perfect game day. And also it would last all day. <laughs> oh yeah, like, I think it would definitely, it would be a long day, probably mm. like 8 to 10 hours. If anything beyond that for me, and I get cranky, and I'm not mm. fun when I'm cranky, so <laughs> I think that would be good. But again, multiple days is nice. Like, truthfully, like yeah. a full weekend, like a three-day weekend of gaming would be nice, because that way you still have time to game, but you don't feel quite as much pressure to game as hard as you can for a full day yeah. so i know this was about our perfect game day or night but it's turned into a weekend now <laughs> yeah i'm breaking I mean, I every I really rule i love conventions and so basically my perfect game weekend <laughs> or day is like a convention but with only friends and and free food this is gonna sound kind of really cheesy but i truly would love so we've we've developed a pretty awesome community in the blitz discord and there are a number of people in there who i now game with online every week it's weird because some of them i don't know much about their personal lives mm -hmm. you know like some of them i know some but things know but how the they most... play games <laughs> right i know how they play games and i know their personalities but like mm -hmm. i don't really know them and that's fine 
fine. I, I, that's not an issue. But like, it would be really neat if I could just poof all of those people into the same space at the same mm-hmm. time so we could play games together in person. And mm-hmm. I know that that would be awkward for some people because we definitely have some introverts in the group. I am not one of them, obviously. <laughs> I would be the ridiculous one running around and hurting the introverts. So, but like, we have people that play every week. Like Avron, who suggested this topic, lives in New Zealand and it's literally the future when we play games with him. When I sign off on a game night, I always say, everybody have a good night slash day because for mm-hmm. Avron, it's daytime. It's been for everybody else, it's night. But I feel very connected to the community that we've built. And I honestly, I haven't gotten to meet a lot of them in person. And I would just love the opportunity to be able to do that. Yeah, that'd be cool. So what games are we playing? This is a game day. (laughs) I know, right? Is that part of the important part of a perfect game day? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I guess for me, it would be a mix of like my favorite games and new games. (laughs) I'm going to talk about conventions again. We used to play a lot of games at conventions and we would play like from 9 a.m. till midnight-ish or something. So it would be a long game day. I like playing new, learning new games. That's fun for me. So like I have a lot of games on my want to play list on BGG, which are just games that I thought looked interesting and then clicked want to play. And just so in the future, if I look at that game, I'll be like, oh yeah, I want to play that. So like some of those games, but then also games that I know I really like because I don't get to play those games that much. (laughs) And then longer games like 18xx games would be nice to play. One of those and then Tragedy Looper and Space Alert, (laughs) all my favorites. (laughs) Like, yeah. It's interesting. I, well, first off, I also would definitely want to play a bunch of my like favorites. Mm -hmm. And I agree and also love to play new games typically. But I think for the purposes of this perfect game day, I don't think I would want to learn any new games, even though that's a thing I typically enjoy. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that would be that I think the long game days where I am both playing a lot of games and learning a lot of games, I think my brain tends to get a little bit more burned out because of the learning parts. Like I'm not just having to think about the gameplay, but I'm also having to ingest new information and process it and all of that. So even though that is a process that I like doing, you know, normally during a long game day when I already know that I have a set amount of time before I get cranky, (laughs) I think I would really just prefer to bring out games that I already know like I think in a perfect world everyone would already know all of them somehow (laughs) right like we would all just be able to sit down open a box and just start playing and that Mm -hmm. very rarely happens like in almost all scenarios I've ever encountered there's often at least one person who hasn't played the game before and you have to do a teach and that's fine but I think it would be neat to have a whole weekend where you didn't have to do that like of course we'd look up rules and you know we'd reference things if we needed to refreshers and whatnot mm-hmm. but if everyone started from a place of knowing the base rules at some level mm-hmm. i think that would make enjoying the games longer easier for my brain yeah so i guess for my perfect one like i still want i like playing the new games but we would know the rules ahead of time I guess yeah <laughs> so like because yeah like the reading and learning the rules and the teach and stuff like that's part that takes up time too so less time to play games so if that were done on a different day and then somehow we still remembered it that would be perfect and then we could just start playing a game even though it's a new because i do want to play a new game still some new games but then also some games where everyone's good and like knows how to play i, I like that it's satisfying to pull out a game and just start <laughs> yeah. playing it and it, yeah. it just, yeah. Yeah. And then I already mentioned Two Rooms in a Boom. Like, I would want to play that, I think. I haven't played that in a while. That's a fun party game with lots of people. And that's fun I with mean, lots of friends. <laughs> my favorite game of Two Rooms in a Boom is still the one that we played at BlitzCon mm-hmm. back in, I don't even remember what year <laughs> now, 2016, 2017, yeah, probably. Lots something like that. Lots of gray rolls, right? Yeah, it was all gray rules. I mean, aside, well, from, aside from the like, bomber and the president. Yeah. I had never played like that before. And <laughs> after I played it like that, I was like, I don't want to play this game any other way. <laughs> like, it was so fun because it was chaotic, but in the best way possible. So yeah, in addition to not having to learn games, like Battlestar Galactica is absolutely on the list of games mm-hmm. that I would want to get played. 
I would probably also want to get some of the other like kind of longer games or maybe some of the, like the nostalgia stuff that I don't get to play very often. Mm-hmm. Like I would love to get a group to play Atmosphere together, like dim the lights and like make it real thematic and spooky. Definitely some party games. Yeah, just like I, I bring out some of the old favorites, some of the ones I've known and loved, like my whole gaming career and some of the newer stuff too. But I think I would just want to mix up the types of games. Like I would want to do some dexterity mm-hmm. stuff, some party stuff, some thinky euros, some, you know, worker placement, some roll and rights, mm-hmm. uh, just kind of a little bit of everything, a mishmash, because that's the type of gaming I like to do in general. Mm-hmm. And I would definitely want to like mix that stuff up so it wasn't just like i i don't want to play a game of return to dark tower followed immediately by battlestar galactica because like that's they're too too big and they're too heavy i don't want to put them next to each other but i do want to play both of them you know i love both those games so we'll split them up with something lighter in the middle yeah and in the perfect game day like everyone would be in the correct mood for the game that we're playing at that time oh of course (laughs) so basically i think we've determined that our perfect game days don't exist (laughs) Like, what's the Especially closest the we can part. get? <laughs> yeah, right? Like, what is what is the... Like, I guess, theoretically, if you got a group of people together and were able to rent out an event hall, mm-hmm. like, that is a doable expense to, for some people in some locations if you pool money, right? Like, that seems at least within the realm of possibility. And that could include buffet food, but probably not Bacchanal quality. <laughs> but hey, you know what? Give me, give me a, a, like a crummy or buffet i'm still okay (laughs) i think the closest we've gotten was with before kids our t-cons toby's birthday we would invite like all of our board game friends we had like three tables in our house i think and then we could just play games and then i think we usually did pizza then but at some point toby started barbecuing (laughs) um, oh yeah i don't remember if that was before kids when he started doing that <laughs> so but like well, yeah. he got the smoker after yeah, he got the kids. smoker after kids but he was barbecuing on his grill like he okay. was smoking using his grill um but yeah like we could have nicer food and then also play a lot of games the problem is like the game choice that's there's always like what do you want to play <laughs> so, like, oh, that play discussion like, that, like you have to have it yeah. and i hate it i hate yeah. that like what do you want to play especially when everybody is that's, nice which is technically uh-huh. what you want you want a group of nice people, but then you have a room full of people going, I don't care. I'll play whatever you want to play. Yeah. Well, I don't care either. Let's play what, you know, what uh, the, he wants to play. Oh, well, I don't mind. You yeah. Somebody pick something and then no one picks anything and you sit there talking for an hour and no one has picked a game. <laughs> yeah, but that's the hard part because like with a perfect game day, like for me, my perfect game day is not going to be the same games as other people's perfect game day. So No, like... no, no. In our perfect game days, our games would be the perfect games for the other people too. <laughs> that's yes, the perfect like, part of it yeah but like my perfect game day is not the same perfect games as someone else's perfect game day if they're like also answering this question and well, right but we're not game, so. we don't count their opinions <laughs> but I mean, in this. this is why i'm saying like it <laughs> yeah. realistically the closest we can get would not happen because it, yeah Ooh, <laughs> also there would be especially if this was a weekend long event there would be like a cozy nap room of some kind <laughs> like a chill quiet like dim space with comfy somethings that people like if they needed a break like me to chill their brain out (laughs) like at times they could go there and they could relax and they could play on their phone or read a book or take a nap or whatever there would be a space for people to decompress there are conventions that have had spaces like this like quiet rooms that I Mm -hmm. think are so valuable especially for neurodivergent people like I think having spaces like that is very valuable and my perfect game day would have one so now you know how to host your perfect game day (laughs) in (laughs) fantasy land (laughs) and that's it for this week's board game blitz visit our website boardgameblitz.com for more content and links this episode was sponsored by gray fox games so many people are loving last light a new game signed by our friend roy kennedy have you ordered your copy from your friendly local game store yet? It's a new year and Grey Fox is being more generous to our listeners than ever before. When you shop at greyfoxgames.com, you can get 20% off all non-exclusive products by entering the code BGBLITZ24 at checkout. But wait, there's more! Until the end of February, you can also get 20% off the Kickstarter Deluxe Edition of War of the World, the new wave, by using the code BLITZWATTWA. That's B-L-I-T-Z-W-O-T-W. BLITZWATTWA. 
<laughs> Join the Blitzkip here community on Discord for game nights, discussions, and more by following the link in the show notes. Support the show by leaving us a rating and review on iTunes or Spotify. And if you like us a lot and want to support us monetarily and get some cool perks, check out our Kofi at ko-fi.com slash boardgameblitz today. Our theme song was composed by Andrew Barrow. Until next time, anywhere you game, I'll follow you there. Any place we game will fill my heart. Anywhere you game, I'll follow you there. We'll open the box and then we'll start. Bye, everyone. Bye. Have you played yeah, it? Yeah, I actually oh, okay. finished it today. Oh, nice. Like... <laughs> It's, or it's no, no, no sorry, I didn't finish it. Uh, why did I say I finished it? I got to the next section today and my brain thought, <laughs> okay. okay, hold it. Don't put that in. Right. <laughs> and the cat is up here by my microphone. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I've never had a cat before. <laughs> when, when you said cat, I was thinking that was in the game. Oh, no. And then the cat no, is there's up no, here. Like, no, there's no like... cat in the game. Okay, and yeah. now she's she's moving on. She just wanted her moment in the sun, I think. Um <laughs> Who very kindly, after episode three hundred, uh, took 200. our plea two hundred. Oh gosh, <laughs> two, in I the future. Ahead. <laughs> I'm in the future. <laughs> <laughs> ah.